relation, I suppose, to exemplar projects, already today we've heard about some excellent projects that we would absolutely call exemplar and we'd like to showcase and, and share with um, colleagues, not only within the Irish setting, but, but worldwide. The IGBC have, 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 have launched an opportunity for that, and you can find it more on our website, where we're going to have a section of the website dedicated to exemplar projects, and there's a form to fill in so, so you can share, share, those, uh, share, share that knowledge with the wider community. Um, the focus of the session now, um, through our three speakers and hopefully a good subsequent discussion, is the performance of buildings post-occupancy, particularly relating to energy use versus the original design intent and really bringing the whole concept of people in, into the mix. Um, it attempts to demonstrate uh, the strong links between people and buildings and their environment and how this all interacts, positively or negatively, as, as the case may be. Um, our speakers here represent the full spectrum of the built environment from building client to architecture, engineering, building user, who are purposely invited to highlight features, aspects, challenges and opportunities relating to low energy buildings and their use post-occupancy. Um, I suppose in terms of some of the background to all of this, uh, we've seen substantial uh, improvements in our building regulations, including Part L, Part J is, is under development at the moment, to drive I suppose better building design in terms of the fabric, uh, heat loss, air infiltration, glazing, etc. We have been promoting better practices in terms of more efficient systems and controls. Um, there's also been a large focus on integrating design teams, a lot of discussions around that. Uh, with earlier engineering input, uh, we have certification systems, we have environmental assessment methodologies, some of which we've heard of this morning and we'll hear of more of them just now. Uh, we're looking at good project management approaches to projects, benchmarking, all aiming to drive improvement in, in, in building design. I suppose, but however, once buildings have been designed, constructed, commissioned and handed over, do we have the same level of regulation on, on building use? I suppose we have best practice, we have very conscientious uh, building owners. Google spoke very well on how they manage their buildings and the staff within their buildings and encourage participation. But I suppose what really drives efficiency in building use over its lifetime. Um, various uh, of the institutions in the built environment have systems and best practice guidance in, in, in this regard. SIBSI uh, have, have been involved in a series called Probe. The BRE have post occupancy evaluation methodologies and toolkits. We have Bream in use. So we have a full, I suppose, toolbox of, of best practice and even in terms of models of how buildings are operated using outsourced FM type models um, uh, um, and can, I suppose, exporting the risk, exporting the risk of, of, of efficiency loss over, over time. Um, there's been some very good discussions here in Ireland in, in, in the last year. We had Bill Bordas over here from the Usable Buildings Trust for a roundtable discussion that was hosted by SAI, which is very interesting. Professor Clemens Croom from Reading University came here to give a talk on intelligent buildings, but not so much on the control systems, but how people interact with their buildings, learning from that interaction and, and using it as a control input when actually maintaining environmental conditions within, within buildings. Um, I suppose what we need is a, 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 formal, a range of formal processes to help drive good use of buildings post-occupancy. I suppose at the, the moment drivers are almost seasonal, they're in response to something, you know, whether it's high fuel costs, climate change, corporate social responsibility, so on and so forth. But maybe if, if we have now we kind of take some time and come up with a more holistic approach, um, which encompasses all of the best practice that we've just talked about, um, uh, um, to, to, to put together a, a formal process or series or suite of processes that could be applied to buildings post-occupancy. Um, to move on then to our speakers and inter introduction, our first speaker, Brian Cavan of Cavan Tooth Architects, he will share experiences from the Robocall residence project at UCD, which is the largest passive house certified project in Ireland. The challenge here that it's multiple tenants and users and that will no doubt move on after studies are complete and make way for new residents, uh, just representing a, a, a unique challenge in terms of continuity. Secondly, we have Peter Flynn of Arup who will discuss our perception of energy use as it applies to buildings and how we use them. This will be illustrated with case studies and examples from Arab's portfolio of projects in low energy design and post-occupancy evaluation and analysis. I actually saw Peter deliver a more comprehensive version of, of this talk in DIT Bolton Street last year, and I, I found it very interesting and, and informative. Um, finally, we're delighted to have Paul Boylan, uh, Head of Asset Management with City Realty Services in Ireland, 
who will talk about some of the approaches, projects and initiatives undertaken at City to con connect people to their environment and drive efficiencies and improvements uh, where they I suppose they created a culture of change through, through their programmes. Each speaker will have approximately 15 minutes before we break for lunch um, so that we can have some time for discussion at the end and we really like to keep to those times. We would welcome a healthy Q&A and discussion afterwards. So on that note, I'd like to invite Brian Kavanagh up to deliver his talk. Thank you very much.